In this video, I'll show you how to get live temperature and humidity data from a DHT11 sensor using an ESP32. We'll be setting up the entire project from scratch using ESP IDF framework in VS Code and also learn how to add dependent library components to make this project work. Hello everyone, welcome to IoT Frontier. My name is Hariharnath. This is another episode of ESP IDF with VS Code. If you haven't watched my previous video or the first video of this series, getting started with ESP IDF using VS Code, then I would highly recommend you to watch it first from the top right corner or in the description before proceeding with this video. Because you need to set up ESP IDF in your VS Code for this project to work. Let's get started. So first we'll try to understand the objective. So first we need to develop a program using ESP IDF in VS Code for an ESP32 to read the temperature and humidity values from DHT11 sensor every 3 seconds. So here we can see the hardware and software required. First one is VS Code with ESP IDF setup which I have explained in my first video. Then ESP32 board. So next is DHT11 module with 3 pins. So we also find 4 pins because I highly recommend 3 pin 1 so that we don't have to use a 10k ohm external resistor. Next we use jumper wise to connect this ESP32 and DHT11 together. Next we look into the circuit diagram. So here the simple the circuit diagram we can see. So in this DHT11 we have 3 pins ground, voltage and signal. So you might see some different names but you can easily identify them. So ground is connected to the ground, the blue color and the purple is connected to voltage that is 3 volts and the signal is connected to D4 which is GPIO4. So you need to make this connection and then use the USB to connect to your laptop. Once we have done this, we can open VS Code. So once the VS Code is open, you can click on this ESP IDF Explorer. And then you can see this ESP IDF welcome page. So you need to click on new project. So it will ask for the IDF to select. Click on that and give the name. And you can select the target ESP32 I am using here. And this is the kit I am using. And the serial port is already selected. Then click on choose template. Go to ESP IDF create a sample project. So click on yes so that the project will be open in a new window. So this is the window and here we can see main.c and in here we will be able to see the blank code. So we need to provide our code. So I will also provide you the link for this code. Next thing that we need to do is we need to even add a dependency that is called component. So this is known as libraries in other language and here in ESP IDF this is known as component. So to add the component we need to type one command so that we add this as a dependency. So for that again open this explorer of ESP IDF. You can click on open ESP IDF terminal. So it will open a terminal. And then you need to paste this idf.py add dependency ESP IDF lib slash dht. So this one is the component that is available. So let me show you. So this is the website that is ESP registry. So from this we can find the component which is needed. And if you search and find with dht as well you can find different values. So these are the different components so you can use this and uh, so I will get back to here and click on enter. So what it will do is it will create one file called idfcomponent.yaml and also add the dependency into that. Still you might see this error it might not go right now but I will explain you how to uh, fix that error. So now we can go to this main folder and IDF component we can see this one. So this is the new line and new file as a dependency that got added. So once this is done 
we need to use F1 so that we have this command palette and then search for reconfigure task. So you need to use this reconfigure task. So previously I have searched it. That's why I got it here in the top. You can search with this name and it will try to build the project configuration and try to reconfigure everything and check the components dependency so that it will download everything and create this managed component folder. So now you can see this red error has gone. So inside this managed component, you can see DHT library got added and some other helper classes got added. So that is how we need to do the configuration. Now we'll try to understand the code. So in the top, you can see all the regular, uh, the libraries directives that we have added. And this is the logging for ESP logging. We are using this one and uh, DHTH we have explained. So next we have defined some of the constants. So first one is DHT type. So we are using DHT11 sensor. That's why we have used this enum and sensor GPIO will be connected to fourth pin of ESP32. And then we are using this tag that is DHT11 tag for logging purpose. I'll show you when, when the logs appear, we use this tag. So you can check this tag is being used here in the logs. So we'll be seeing DHT11 in the prefix of every log. So next thing is we can look into the app main. So inside app main, this is the first function that will be running always. So inside this, we have created a task. So this task is having some multiple arguments. First argument is DHT task that it has to run this task. And then what is the descriptive name of this? And then what is this stack? Stack size we are mentioning here. And you can see what are the arguments here. So stack size we have mentioned. If there are any parameters, we have put null. Next one is the priority. What is the highest number? That is the highest priority uh, that is given to this task. We have given five. Next is task handle if we wanted to do something, but we have put it as null. So now when this task is created, so app main will be completed and this task will be running in the background. So if you go to this, this task, so here what we are doing first, we are creating the declaring the variables for temperature or humidity as float. And then in the while loop, which is the continuous infinite loop, we are trying to use the library, this function DHT read float data. So here also it is taking multiple values. So you can see first it will be asking sensor type, whether 11 or 12. We have defined one constant previously that is 11. And then pin is 4 that is also defined. And then what are the two values that we are going to get? So humidity and temperature. Then we are trying to equal this with ESP OK, which means that whether we get any error or not based on that value, if it is no error, then it will be equal to this and will be running as successful. If not, if there is any error and it will not be equal to ESP OK, it will go to else condition. So here, if it is OK, then ESP log I, I means info level logging. And then we are using tag humidity in this format, temperature, and then mapping it like this. So if we get any error, then we are going to use log E, which means for error logging. And then uh, we have failed to read the data from sensor, that kind of error message. Then finally, we use V task delay so here we are trying to use three seconds delay so that it will stop the program and doesn't read uh, continuously from sensor every millisecond. So it will stop for three seconds and then again try to read the data. So this is the three second delay. Now that we have done with the program, we can go back to the ESP IDF Explorer and then click on build flash and monitor at a time so that it will do all the stuff in continuous manner. Now we can see build is almost completed. So it will try to flash. So here it is asking me you art level which type of flash method. So previously I didn't set up that's why it is asking now. So you can click on you art and then it will try to search for it and write. So you can also click on the 
boot button in the ESP32 board to flash it properly if it is not connecting. And then initially we got some error but that is okay the connection might be loose. So we got the values that is 63% of humidity temperature that is 27. So here you can see the prefix the tag that I have used in here is being shown here. This will be very useful if you are using multiple tasks so that you can understand from where this log is coming. And then now I can try to blow some air to the humidity sensor. Now I have blown some air. You can see some kind of humidity got changed. So previously it was 63. After blowing some air, you can see 70, 73, 76 like that. Even temperature got increased to 27, 28. So by this we can understand that temperature and humidity sensor that is DHT11 is sending the correct values to us. And that's it for today's video. In the next video, I'll try to explain you how to use MQTT protocol to send these humidity and temperature values to MQTT dashboard. So stay subscribed and hit the bell icon to get the notification when the video is released. If you found this video informative, please type helpful and smash that like button. You can watch more tutorials on ESP IDF from this playlist. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.